Are you working on an IoT project? Or maybe a robotics design? How about a telematics application? Or maybe a transportation design? Or a broadcast server? And what do all of these applications have in common? RF. If you answered yes to any of those questions, you will definitely want to get the most performance possible out of your design. But how? With some help from connectors, adapters, cable assemblies, and antennas. That's how. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. RF is a ubiquitous design element found in a large variety of electronic designs today. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Rahul Rajan from Amphenol RF and I discuss how you can optimize your RF performance through each step of the signal chain. We examine how you can utilize Amphenol RF's wide range of connectors, including solutions for PCBs, board-to-board -board RF connectivity, board-to-panel, and more. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Amphenol RF. Hi, Rahul. Thank you so much for joining me today. Of course. Glad to be here. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about RF solutions from PCB to antenna today. But before we dig into the details, can you lay out the signal path for us? So if you really look at a traditional RF system, such as an LTE, Wi-Fi, GPS, RFID, Bluetooth, V2V, the signal really travels in the system through an array of different spaces. Now, typically, there is an RF signal generator that generates the RF signal on a printed circuit board. It is then transferred across that printed circuit board, usually through a PCB-mounted RF connector. And in some cases, they may also jump from one board to another via a board-to-board -board connector. That is usually passed to an I.O. or an input-output connector that brings that signal to the outside world. Now, from that point on, it is usually transmitted via an antenna, or in some cases, transferred to another box and then to an antenna. And then really from the antenna, it is then transmitted over the air, where it's really captured by another antenna or another system, and then off it goes. So that, in general, is how we see the overall RF signal path as. Okay, great. Now, let's start at the PCB. Rahul, what kind of RF solutions does Amphenol offer for PCBs? The short answer is quite a lot. And the reason for that really is, you know, given the wide variety of different kinds of RF interfaces, the different kinds of orientations, frequency range all the way up to 40 gigahertz, methods of PCB terminations, whether that is surface mount, through hole, edge launch, all of this combinations really result in a very wide variety of standard products that we offer. Now, most of these common interfaces include what's called an AMC connector, commonly known in the industry as UNFL, or an MCX connector, MMCX connector, SMA, as well as non-magnetic options that really is getting more and more popular. The other advantage, in addition to having a wide variety of options that we offer to customers, is our tried and tested HFSS PCP launch simulation capability. And what we do there is we're able to predict or simulate the performance of a PCB connector on a customer PCB board. So what this really helps is either picking the right part or creating the right part for the application really helping the customer optimize their PCB launch, thereby eliminating any potential poor performance once assembled and saving them really at the end of the day, a lot of money and headache. The other thing that we also incorporate into our design on most of our PCB products is surface mount reflow testing. And we do this because a lot of our customers are using our products and assembling them onto the boards using surface mount reflow. So we are able to create designs that withstand these temperatures. So again, eliminating that potential failure down the road where it becomes a big problem, a big headache, and wastes a lot of customer money there. That makes sense. Now, what about board-to-board -board RF connectors? 
What kind of trends are you seeing in this space and what solutions does Amphenol offer? So the board-to-board RF technology really has evolved over the past two decades. Traditionally, these replace expensive internal cable assemblies, but as newer and newer applications demand more and more RF channels inside a system, really the trend has become smaller and denser. And the basic idea here for a board-to-board connector, unlike a traditional connector where you take one end of a connector and you mate to the other, the board-to-board connectors are mated blindly by mating one board to another. So what happens in such a scenario is the connectors themselves need to be designed to allow for any potential misalignment when the two boards are mated together. And this is what is commonly known in the industry as as float. That's a very important characteristic for a board-to-board connector. We also have wide range of solutions available here, whether that's 50 ohm or 75 ohm. And we also offer some of the industry leading solutions like our HD EFI in terms of its float specifications. It can tolerate a very high degree of misalignment and still maintain really good RF performance. What this really means for customers is a little bit more design freedom, given that these RF connectors can handle higher misalignment or float. Also, as mentioned before, given the increased use of RF connections, you know, customers are really choosing to gang a lot of these connectors together to offer multi-port solutions that at the end of the day is easier to assemble, easier to handle, and thereby making the total cost of ownership for a customer a lot lower. Okay. So Rahul, what about the RF solutions from the board to the panel? Yeah, so now we get from inside the box to where the transition to the outside really takes place. So the connection from inside to the outside world is done via an IO or like an input-output interconnect. These come in variety of shapes and sizes, whether that is an adapter, whether that is PCB mounted in some cases, or in some cases it could just be a cable assembly that's internal to the box. The biggest trend that we're seeing now, and that's mostly driven by the industrial and the IoT applications, is the need for a rugged interconnect. And the reason for that is these are all being used outside in the elements. And what we are able to offer here is connectors or these solutions that are waterproof. Some of them are special black plated connectors for specific military applications or our extreme exposure connectors where we played our connectors with our proprietary chemistry to offer industry-leading 720 hours of salt spray resistance. Now, if the solution is a cable assembly, then we also have multitudes of options for the cable, you know, and that could be flexible, it could be semi-rigid, or it could be these small, tiny micro cables that are very ubiquitous. The other trend that we're also seeing, very similar to the board-to-board, is multi-board, where you have multiple RF connectors in one package. But in some cases, hybridization, where it's not just RF, but it's RF and power and DC connections all housed together to offer a smaller footprint, ease of use, because you're only mating one connector at a time, not multiples, and thereby offering, again, customers and ultimately the users overall total lower cost of ownership. Fantastic. Now, we also need to talk about outside-the-box cable assemblies, right? You know, again, once we get outside of the system here, now you're exposed down in the element. And if it's connected to another box, in some cases, instead of an antenna, it's usually done via an external cable assembly. Again, the trend here is usually these are exposed to the elements outside. So waterproofing it, ruggedizing it, and in general, protecting the cable assembly becomes very, very critical. So we offer a wide variety of standard IP67 and IP68 rated cable assemblies for outdoor use there. The other big advantage that we bring to the table is that Amphenol also manufactures a lot of the actual RF cable internally here. So what customers are able to get is a vertically integrated solution that is easier to control amid a challenging supply chain environment. I mean, we know what that looked like over the past few years. Now, we are also able to make custom cable assemblies quite easily. 
And that's because of the wide variety of standard character choices that we carry here. And similar to inside the box, customers are consolidating into a single interconnect that may potentially house RF and non-RF like digital and power. That makes sense. Now, Rahul, what about antennas? Can we explore those in a bit more depth as well? So the final piece in this traditional transmission channel is the antenna piece. That's where the RF signal ends up and then gets radiated out into the world wirelessly. And that's how we know your cell phone signal, your Bluetooth, your GPS, your Wi-Fi, that's all your signals that are out in the world. So if you really look at an antenna, you can broadly categorize these into three kinds of antennas. There is an embedded antenna, which are assembled, soldered directly onto a printed circuit board. There are also internal antennas. These are little pieces of antenna with a cable that's attached to it. And there are also external antennas. You know, these are the antennas that, which are assembled outside of those boxes. Most of the applications that we see in a traditional RF layout we just reviewed uses an external antenna. And Amphenol has extensive design capabilities in all of these different varieties of antennas, as well as dedicated divisions that build, test, and produce these antennas across many markets. Now, we absolutely can't forget about the testing of that RF signal as well, right? What does Amphenol carry for this aspect of my design? Yeah, of course, we can't forget that. Because once systems, once designed, need to make sure that they work to what they're designed for. And that's where the specific testing is very important. And for that, we carry specific test cables and adapters. And we have the largest portfolio of adapters in the industry, as well as standard off-the-shelf commercial, as well as precision test cables. They also make very specific high-performance test cables whether that is phase stable up to five degrees, cables that have exceptional VSWR and loss performance all the way up to 20 gigahertz, high mating cycles, 5,000 up to in some cases with some interfaces. But we also have seen test cables where a high number of flexure cycles are required. And so we do have products that use cables that are rated up to 10,000 flexure cycles. So in addition to all of that, we also carry higher frequency microwave connectors as well as adapters to carry along with that. So Rahul, can we get into some application examples? Yeah, absolutely. So this is where I'll talk about, you know, how we use some of this in the automotive example here. So if you look at traditionally in an automobile, you know, we've had RF for a long time. And these were traditionally used in infotainment systems, antennas, and then really the harness to connect the two of them. But as you've probably seen in the recent past, you know, automobiles have really become, you know, increasingly safer, increasingly smarter, and much more autonomous, right? I mean, automobiles are quickly becoming just big giant computers that move. So all of these are really possible because of cameras, radars and LiDAR sensors that are used in relatively higher and higher number across the automobile. These devices require very high reliable transmission of data in order to function accurately and timely as safety is very important. And what we see are some of these signal itself in some cases are not even RF. However, what we're seeing is the adoption of these RF connectors and cable assemblies to transmit these non-RF signals from sensors to compute modules because of their superior performance characteristics compared to legacy solutions. So what I'll try to do is focus on some of these applications in the next few slides. Great. Now, these compute module solutions look like PCB connectors. Are they similar? Yeah, they actually are. So these compute modules are like the brain of the automobile. And if you see, you know, these are pretty complicated PCB or printed circuit boards, right? That uses multiple input output RF PCB connectors. There are generally two types of RF connectors that are used here. One is a, what we call a traditional Fokker connector used in you know, your typical automotive antenna applications, infotainment applications. And these have been used in the industry for over two decades. But the emerging RF connector of choice now 
referred to commonly in the industry as mini FACRA or automate, as we call it here at Amphenol, is becoming the connector of choice for these compute modules. In general, the challenge in a compute module architecture as it pertains to these RF connectors are twofold. One, the limited overall size restrictions and having to accommodate multiple RF signals for many sensors, cameras, et cetera, into a limited space. So density really becomes a challenge. Space becomes premium. The other challenge is the need for higher bandwidth, higher data throughput requirement, as these cameras and sensors become higher and higher resolution. And this is where the mini factor, the automate, really shines. You know, they can really reduce installation requirements by up to 80% compared with traditional FACRA products while offering higher data transmission of up to 20 gigabits per second, as well as carry the traditional advantages that a legacy FACRA connectors have, such as key coded and color coded. So when you put two of them right next to each other, you can key them and you can color code them so you're not mixing and matching by mistake. Again, since these are all PCB connectors, you know, we are able to leverage our expertise like surface mount reflow compatible, PCB RF optimization, the HFSS that I talked about before, as well as the tape and reel packaging. The other key element here is the use of advanced manufacturing and assembly methods for higher reliability, quality, cost efficiency, as well as scale. And scale is an important word because the need for some of these connectors are in tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of these. So that becomes a big factor there. For a traditional Fokker connector, which are still very popular, we also have a wide variety of options, including IP-rated cable assemblies. We also adhere our designs to rigorous US car industry standards that involve some very long-term reliability testing, so it's ensured to work for long periods of time. The other very important trend that we've seen here is some of these technologies, some of these automotive cameras and sensors that have been developed for the automotive market are getting traction in non-automotive industries, such as industrial automation, robotic platforms, et cetera. So in such cases, what happens is if they're using an already existing automotive camera, the automotive solutions such as the automated mini FACRA or the FACRA solutions are getting used in all of those non-automotive applications as well. Okay. So Rahul, what about when my audience needs to connect a device to a PCB? Can you guys help them there as well? Absolutely. So from the actual compute modules itself, you know, we have a wide variety of products that connect to the individual cameras and sensors. Now, these are usually done using what's called breakout cables. So you'd have one of these automated connectors on one end, and you'll have four or three or multiple RF cables that come out of these connectors. And they break out to these individual Fokker connectors on the other side that gets attached to the cameras or the sensors or radars, whatever, and so forth. We also have waterproof Fokker connectors there that are rated to IP67 and IP69K specifications, as these can potentially be exposed to the elements since they are more closer to the outside world. We also make it easy for customers where we stock standard fixed-length assemblies here, so customers can get their hands on them fairly quickly for testing their solutions. So Rahul, what if my audience needs some kind of specific customization? What does Amphenol offer in terms of customization? So we here at Amphenol RF really thrive on customized solutions because it really presents an opportunity to provide our industry-leading engineering expertise to solve real application problems. So some of the examples we see in this particular automotive space are in the camera module interconnect space, as well as the smart antennas. So a camera module interconnect or camera back connector is, as the name suggests, the back of an automotive camera that is usually hidden to the outside world. It usually consists of a Fokker connector on one end, packaged with another inner connect on the other end that mates to a connector on the printed circuit board inside the camera. So once these are mated and secured, the entire unit then becomes a camera module. So we've really pioneered these solutions in the industry and worked with many camera manufacturers to address specific application requirements, whether that be packaging space, 
IP ceiling, electrical specs, long-term reliability with our core competencies there. On the other side, if you really look at an automotive antenna, like the shark fin antenna that you see there on the right, a lot of the automotive OEMs are really turning them into smart antennas, you know, really driven by autonomy and vision systems, where mechanically they are all consolidating all of the various RF signal into one location for easier processing, analog digital conversion, and packaging efficiency, as well as assembly time. So in such a scenario, you know, what is typically used is a board-to-board -board RF connector, kind of similar to what we talked about before in order to address these challenges. So in a lot of these designs, you know, we've used our HDEFI interface to really effectively meet the mechanical, electrical, as well as the float requirements that these systems would have. All right. So Rahul, this has been a lot to take in today. Can you recap your main points for me? You know, Amphenol RF, if uh, you haven't gathered already, has a very wide portfolio of products all along this RF signal chain. And that's really driven by our experience in all of these markets, you know, whether that be in transportation, IoT, broadcast, RFID, robotics, medical, test equipment, industrial. And so because of these wide experience, you know, we're well positioned to support our customers on their entire RF interconnect needs at each step of the signal chain. So the advantage that this offers to many of our customers is the one-stop shop where we can provide the entire suite of solutions. But also more importantly for them, the cross use of technologies across industries where we can potentially adapt a particular solution that it already exists in one industry to solve challenges for another. For example, the automotive products in the industrial application is a case in point. Again, a drive to work collaboratively with our customers, understanding their challenges, and leveraging our world-class engineering expertise to solve them is what really sets us apart from our competitors. And we really see this market continuing to expand quite aggressively, and we are well-positioned to grow along with it. Fantastic. Well, it was a pleasure speaking with you today, Rahul. Thank you so much for joining me. Absolutely. Thank you, Amelia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Amphenol RF. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section at eejournal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.